everybody. It's good to be with you. My name is Margaret and I'm part of the children and families team at St John's Church here in the village. I know that some of you will be learning from home at the moment and some of you will be learning in school. But wherever you're joining this assembly from, I hope that you enjoy it. Are you part of a team? As I said, I'm part of the children and families team at St John's Church. There's a group of us and we share ideas, we do different things, we plan activities. And our team includes Vicar Ruth and Nicola, our children and families leader. What other teams might you be in? Well, as your family team to start with, very important. Families work together and help each other out, sometimes doing things that you don't really want to do, perhaps like tidying your room or helping clear the table, making sure the pets are fed or going out for a walk with your dog if you have one on a cold, windy day. What about teams at school? You might have sports teams so that on, on sports day you race against each other to see who gets the most points. You might have teams in school where you get points for doing different things, for being helpful, for working hard, for looking after each other. You might be in a football team or you might be in a team that makes music, like a choir or a band. And how do people get to be in those teams? Well, sometimes they're chosen. Sometimes they volunteer. I volunteered to help with the children and families team because I thought I had some skills that I could use. It's sometimes hard though when you're being part of a team, especially if you're the one who's got to do the choosing. It's a big responsibility. It's very easy if you've got to choose a team to choose your best friends. And that's fine because you need people who you know will help you and you get on with very well. But sometimes you might need people with different skills. For example, if you were choosing a football team and your best friend was a brilliant goalie, you'd need somebody else to be the striker or one of the defenders. And if you were in a music team, if your best friend was great at playing a guitar, you may need somebody else to play the drums or sing. What about when you're waiting to be chosen? Sometimes your teachers might let you choose people to be in a team. It might be for a quiz. It might be for a game. And it's hard to wait. You might be one of those people who's chosen quite quickly and others other times you might be one of the last people to be chosen, but it doesn't matter because so long as you work for your team and you all do the same things, it's fine. I want to share a story with you today that comes from the Christian Bible. And it's about Jesus choosing a team of people. For Christians, Jesus was God's special son. And before Christmas, you will have heard the story about the preparations for his birth, that Mary and Joseph had to go to Bethlehem and then leave again and go to Egypt in order to keep Jesus safe. You've heard about the angels telling people that God's son had been born Ordinary people like shepherds 
who rushed and left the sheep to go and see the baby. And wise men, kings perhaps, who travelled a great distance guided by a beautiful star because they knew that this child was somebody very important. We don't know a lot about Jesus' childhood. There are one or two stories about what he did at different times. But the story today is about when he was grown up, when he'd become a man and knew that he was about to do what God had asked him to do and decided that he better have some help to do it. So the story comes from the new part of the Christian holy book, the New Testament. And that has got all the stories about Jesus, about what he did when he was alive, about his friends and what they did after he died. The first part of the Christian Bible is the Old Testament. And that's got about history about all the things that happened before Jesus was born and how the world came to be. Now, Jesus lived in the place we call Israel today, near a very large lake, the Lake of Galilee. In fact, this lake was so big that it was almost like a sea. And in some stories, it's called the Sea of Galilee. Now, living so close to such a large lake, lots of people were fishermen. They went out, usually at night, to catch fish in big nets, which they brought into the shore, and then they would sell perhaps keep some for their family, in order to make a living. Jesus knew some of these people. Some of them might have been his good friends. But he didn't go and just choose all the people he knew best. Instead, he prayed to God and asked for some help in deciding who he should choose. As Jesus walked by the great lake of Galilee one day, he saw Andrew and Simon Peter, his friends. Come with me, he called to them. I'll get you a bigger catch. They'd been busy mending and cleaning their nets because when you fish using a big net, sometimes it gets damaged. Sometimes it gets weed and dirt on it. So they were sorting that out. They might have thought that Jesus was going to show them a place where they could catch even more fish than they usually did. But that wasn't quite what Jesus had in mind. A bit further on, there were two brothers, John and James who were also cleaning and mending their nets, ready to go out fishing that night. Follow me, Jesus called. Come with me. And immediately they did. They didn't say, well, can you just hang on for a while while I put these nets away and I just need to let my family know and all of that because they trusted Jesus as their new leader. There must have been something very special about him that made them want to go with him to try and do what he was going to do. No more looking for fish, Jesus said to them. From now on, I shall teach you how to be fishers of people. So, those people can be closer to God and know how to live better. Four good men, but still not enough, 
Jesus knew he had a big task to do. So the next person that he called was a bit of a surprise. His name was Matthew. Now Matthew was a tax collector for the Romans. The Romans were still in charge in the country that Jesus lived in, just as they had been at the time of his birth. Indeed, the Romans were still pretty much in charge through most of the world. Matthew collected taxes for the Romans, but he also added a little bit extra on. So he kept some for himself. So as you can imagine, he wasn't very popular. Jesus said to him, Matthew, come with me, follow me. And amazingly, Matthew did. He wanted to change. He wanted to do something different. He wanted to be closer to God too. So he stopped being a tax collector for the Romans. I would imagine they weren't very pleased. But he went with Jesus. Jesus continued to choose people to be with him. And each time he prayed to God and he asked God to show him who to choose. So he wasn't just picking the people he liked or the ones who might be the bravest or have the most money. But the people who would follow him, who he could be a good leader. He would be part of their team. The names of the people Jesus chose, as well as Simon and Andrew and James and John and Matthew. There was Philip and Bartholomew and Thomas and another James and Thaddeus and Simon and Jesus. Jesus and his friends had many adventures together. They became part of his team. They followed him and tried to do what God wanted them to do. And they learned a lot about each other and being part of Jesus' team. Thank you very much for listening. Now I'm going to say a prayer and if you would like to make it your prayer, say Amen at the end. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunities that we have to be part of a team in our families, in our schools, in our community. Thank you also for the opportunity to be part of God's team, led by Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much for listening. I hope to see you again soon.